Okay, we're back live in Orlando, Florida for SAP Sapphire. We're coming into the back end of the day two. I'm John Furrier, SiliconAngle.com with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here with James, uh, Steve Killen, who's the Enterprise Server Manager at James Hardy Building Products, uh, an SAP customer. Welcome to the Cube. Thank you very much. So, so, Steve, you know, we've been listening all week. Uh, actually, before we do that, tell us about uh, uh, James Hardy Building Products, and we'll, then we'll get into it. Uh, so, James Hardy is a, a manufacturer of fiber cement building products. We make uh, siding for houses, and you might have heard of Hardy Backer for tile underlayment. Um, and we're about a one and a half billion dollar company. Uh, we're um, predominantly in the U.S., but we have uh, operations in Australia, uh, the Philippines, and Europe. So you're you've been an SAP customer for a while, I presume. Yeah, uh, I think about seven years now. Okay, so when you you know you think about SAP, I mean, t today and yesterday we've been hearing about it, you know fast, mm -hmm. um, simple, you know mobile, and that those aren't a adjectives that you typically associate with with SAP. Um, now. We love to talk to customers because we can cut through the marketing and yep. say, okay, well, where are we here? So criticisms of SAP, are, they are complex, they are expensive, but you know, incredibly robust. Yep. Where do you want to see SAP go? Uh, I mean, I think, you know, we've made some inroads by virtualizing our entire SAP environment. You know, if we go back to sort of about five years ago, everything was physical. You know, every time we wanted to bring up a QA environment or something like that, we had to bring up sort of 10 physical servers, have the power in the data center to do that. Um, and so now that we've sort of virtualized that, we can, you know, it gives us more agility. Um, and I think, you know, as, as things go forward, being able to move that seamlessly to the cloud and back again, you know, as, as resource requirements, you know, uh, increase, that's, that's sort of what we're looking for. So, so when did you guys make the decision to virtualize uh, SAP? Uh, we did that about three years ago. Um, you know, uh, again, because of, uh, you know, power requirements and things. We just couldn't keep growing the way we were growing with a physical architecture. Um, disaster recovery was also big for us. Uh, being able to, you know, uh, do any kind of DR in a physical environment was really tricky. So now we just replicate the entire VM, and uh, we can bring it up within within a few minutes. So, Steve, as an infrastructure professional, I'm sure you love the fact that you virtualized yep. uh, SAP. But uh, how how did the application guys feel about that? Were they sort of a little tense? Yeah, it was, it was interesting at first. I mean, we started off by uh, virtualizing test dev, which I think a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. um, that gave those guys, uh, uh, you know, some, some comfort level. You know, we did that for about a year. They sort of played around with it, realized it was stable and worked. Um, and then, you know, we had a we had an implementation to move to a 64-bit architecture. And uh, that was when we decided that this was the time we were going we were gonna virtualize it at the same time. Okay, so 64-bit Intel, presumably, yep. right? Yep. We're so what's Win we're Windows, Oracle, uh, and VMware. Oh, okay, so 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 you're virtualizing Oracle. Virtualizing Oracle on, on Windows and VMware. So that's a whole another interesting discussion. Oh, yes. that, I'm sure you've got the full support of uh, of Oracle <laughs> that you're yeah, that, virtualizing yeah. with VMware, right? That's, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're obviously you know not OVM. I mean, <laughs> I, <don't> know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think there's one person using that, right? Um, no. Uh, you know, we, we, we did, you know, we talked with Oracle about it. Obviously, you know, uh, three years ago, they weren't I could see pleased. the headlock. Mark. Exactly. Uh, uh, <laughs> I think they're a little bit more uh, happy with it these days than they were about three years ago. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, the kind of support model is if, if you you might have to reproduce it on a hardware uh -huh. platform. Physical. Nobody, yeah. nobody ever asks you to do that. I mean, you know, we, we've been running it now for sort of three three plus years, and we've never had an issue just running on the VMware. So you're still getting good support from, from Oracle? Yep. And, uh, yep, haven't had any issues. They, they may threaten it, but the bark is louder. Yeah, than I, mean, I mean, I guess fortunately we haven't had to call them a lot, yeah. but uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, that is fortunate. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so talk more about your infrastructure. Is, uh, what, what, what else is underneath there? Yeah, so we, uh, we're we an uh, EMC. We had a so Clarion CX4 uh, 240. Um, we've just actually recently in the last two weeks upgraded to a, a VNX 5700. Uh, so, but that's nothing's quite on that yet. Um, we also use RecoverPoint to replicate uh, between two sites, which is in uh, Irvine and Chicago. Um, we have a hundred meg link, and we we have about a half a terabyte of data on uh, ECC that we replicate, um, and we're about maybe if a minute behind. Uh, so uh, we can we can get really really up to the so, minute. So pretty tight R yep. RPO. Yeah, we set our RPI to 15 minutes, but at any one time, we're only about a minute behind, if that. Oh, okay. So, and you don't really have to compress that any further in your environment. No, we have a we have a we have a riverbed system on either side to help with the compression. Um, 
but and it works really well. Okay, so um, so where talk about the applications? You know, and you got SAP obviously. Talk about what you're doing there and what other apps that you've virtualized. Uh, we're we're about ninety nine percent virtual. Really? So, um, there's a couple of systems that you know have cards in them that just won't virtualize yet. Um, but yeah, so we virtualize Exchange, SharePoint. Um, we have uh, Manulogistics for transportation. Yeah. Um, we BI, BW, everything, everything on BI. And what do you do for backup? Uh, we use Avamar. Uh, so uh, we we basically have uh, about 28 days um, uh, of everything backed up onto disk, which we then replicate that, that as well to our Chicago office. Um, we still, right now, do quarterly backups to state, but. Um, you know, because it's not really a great solution yet for long-term uh, archival. Um, but That's a put it on tape and hope you know, hopefully you don't have to have, have to get to it. But it's cheap. Yep. Strategy. Yep. Pretty much. That's, yeah. that's, that's the only reason we really keep it around. When when you went to Avamar, I mm -hmm. mean, obviously, well, well, not obviously, but was that in conjunction with your decision to virtualize, or was that separate? No, it was it was separate. It was a separate decision. So um, what, what what were you doing before Avamar? I mean, it was all backup exchange. You kind of virtually replaced it. But you could have picked your existing backup cycle, right? You talked to something like that, and then you go ahead and start again later. Why did you choose not to do that? So, um, talk about what's on EMC to do that. What's the, what, do, what do you want from that? Well, let's hear it. So, and I've, I've mentioned it this many times. Uh, the UI needs improvement. Um, it's it's still Unisphere is a step in the right direction, but I, I still feel they're paying a bit of catch up uh, with some of the other vendors out there. Um, it's not quite as simple to use as, as I think it can be, um, and uh, reporting would be the other one. Um, it's it's kind of you know the reporting's there, but it's it's not sort of in your face and being able to really quickly get. Okay, you know what's the performance on this this, this disk? So they're the two main things that that I've been beating EMC up over over the last twelve months, and hopefully they uh, they make some changes there. Okay, yeah, reporting and and that's you know those are those are fixable problems. They are right? fixable uh, problems, and yeah. you know and and, and I think uh, you know it, it really wouldn't take that much for them to sort of really you know get a get a small UI team together and and come up with something whizzy and easy to use. What do you think about the uh, SAP messaging around analytics and real time? Obviously, I mean, what's your experience? Obviously, you did virtualized environments. That's a fantastic accomplishment. Uh -huh. um, but now you got to get the analytics going, and they're talking about all these dashboards. Are you guys there? I mean, how do you, how do you see that that uh, the reality yeah. of what they're showing as as today's real time dashboards? It, it, you know, it, you, you see the keynote presentations, and you're like. Yeah. Wow, I'd love that. That yeah. looks really kind of cool. Pass, pass uh, that over this smoky crack. Right. Well, it's, it's, but my, I, I guess my concern is how how easy is it to get there, yeah, right? Uh, it's you the know, demo version. It's the demo version. I mean, you got your iPad with your widgets that you put up, and I'm like, hey, if, if someone if, if someone could do that for me inside 30 days, I'd sign up today. Um, you know, but I, I get the feeling it's kind of more of the millions of What's dollars. What's your take from your seat, your chair? You're looking at your your landscape, which is your environment, to that dashboard, which is the Nirvana. Yep. Right? What's the challenges? What are they, how do you get there in your mind? How do you see, what roadmap do you see from your perspective? I mean, I think some of it is, uh, you know, actually sitting down and, and, and having the business people spend some time actually defining what they want to see. 
Uh, I mean, I think a lot of times uh, these these solutions are kind of get designed by IT in a vacuum, and and they kind of go, hey, here's a dashboard for you. Oh uh, well, uh, I didn't really want that. I wanted this, this, and this. So yeah, you, you know, change uh, this. Uh, it's gonna be six months. Exactly. <laughs> so so I think I, I think you know, I really think IT is kind of changing, and they you know, I mean, I'm. I'm an infrastructure guy, right? Um, I went and did my MBA a couple of years back, I, and I think that the 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 way that IT is going is the propeller head kind of guy is is going to be moved sort of towards the back, and um, uh, IT even infrastructure people are going to need to have a bit more business acumen to, to really understand what's going on. What do you think of um, the whole DevOps movement? Are you familiar with what's going on there, and is it something that you guys have looked into? Uh, I'm not familiar. So with it's the that. whole notion of in, maybe describe it and, and talk about you know what you might might uh, what it might mean to you guys. So DevOps is the intersection of application development and and, and infrastructure operations. Okay. The idea being, somebody in application development takes a piece of code, they throw it on the fence to to your guys. Mm -hmm. And then you got to put it into your production environment, and then you got to sometimes hack away at it. You got to redo the scripts, and then you inevitably mess something up and bring it back and say, "Hey, your code's all messed up." And you say, "Well, it was fine when I gave it to you." And it goes back and forth and back and forth, and the project elongates. And so there's this notion of cross training, um, in, in in both disciplines, yep. both application development and and infrastructure operations. Maybe it should be better termed ops dev, as John Furrier says. So. Do you see that kind of culture shift as a particular sort of beyond agile programming? What are your What are your thoughts on how that might apply in your world? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's one of the main reasons I'm here, right? I mean, I'm a I'm an infrastructure guy at an at an SAP business conference, and the reason I'm here is to really kind of start to understand uh, what SAP is trying to do, so that I can provide better value to my you know my app dev guys. Uh, when they come to me and, and, and ask for that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I think it's, it's absolutely... Yeah, because those guys obviously have a lot of juice in the organization, yep. and they're the interface to the business, and so, good. All right, Steve, well, listen, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure meeting you. Nice meeting you, Good okay, meeting, thanks for coming on. We'd love to hear the customer's perspective. Uh, love the question of what do you need to work on. <laughs> it comes right out. Uh, thanks for coming on theCUBE. We appreciate it. We'll be right back with our next guest after this break.